This is the third video for the Ethics and Legal Considerations part of the Animal Chiropractic class. In this part we will start to discuss the licensing rules and in the next two parts we will discuss the licensing rules in more detail. First thing to keep in mind as we talk about the licensing rules is that each state has its own statutes and its own rules. Unlike some more established parts of the law, there's not much consistency from state to state with respect to animal chiropractic. Be careful about copying what people are doing in other states because that may or may not be permissible in the state where you are practicing. Before you start to practice, you need to take some time to review the statutes and the regulations in the state where you plan to practice to be certain that you are following those rules, that you understand the rules. Failing to follow the rules can have serious consequences, including criminal consequences, as well as the loss of a license. Before we get into the rules, let's talk about our attitudes towards the rules. Uh, many times people get mad about rules and don't try to understand them and intentionally ignore them or disregard them. Think about Buddha's statement. Holding on to anger is like grasping a hot coal with the intent of throwing it at someone else. You are the one who gets burned. Getting upset about rules that you think are not fair, getting upset about rules that don't respect your skills may bother you, but it's not going to bother the state boards or the people who have adopted those statutes. So when you think about rules, think about, I think a healthier way to think about rules are these last two quotes. The pessimist complains about the wind. The optimist expects it to change. The realist adjusts the sails. The rules are what they are. Certainly, if you can try to change them and convince the state to change them, you may pursue that through the proper channels. But if they're not going to change, then you need to be a realist and adjust the way you practice so that you can get to where you want to be with the least amount of difficulty. And of course, the last quote from Maya Angelou, if you don't like something, change it. If you can't change it, change your attitude. Again, if the rules are not going to change, then you need to stop and think about how you approach those rules and, and not lose, not hurt yourself by being resentful. Generally, the purpose of regulations for animal chiropractic is to protect the public. The regulations cover topics like who can provide adjustments, what kind of training or qualifications should they have, the rules also discuss informed consent in some states, including Texas, have some specific rules about informed consent for animal chiropractic. Uh, honest advertising is required, both of chiropractors and veterinarians. And the rules may also address the quality of care provided by professionals, including malpractice uh, cases and record keeping requirements. So the first question that should be addressed by the rules is who can adjust animals? Veterinarians have a general license. Because they have a general license to provide animal care, they may provide anything within their scope of practice when they're working with animals. Now, some states do have rules that require that veterinarians should not provide care that they have not been trained to provide. So a veterinarian could try to provide chiropractic care without any training about chiropractic, but a more prudent veterinarian would probably obtain at least some training in how to provide chiropractic care before they try to provide that care for their patients. Chiropractors in most states do not have any more right to adjust animals than any other layperson. Typically, the states allow 
chiropractors and laypersons to provide animal chiropractic care under the supervision of a licensed veterinarian. That supervision is critical. The statutes generally do not require any particular training for chiropractors or laypersons before they provide chiropractic care, but they do require that supervision by a licensed veterinarian. Now, I think a better set of rules might be a set of rules that first requires veterinarians receive some training in chiropractic before they provide animal chiropractic care, and a set of rules that respects the skills of chiropractors and allows some opportunities or more opportunities for chiropractors who are properly trained to provide animal chiropractic to provide that care with less supervision or no supervision. And it would also be good for the rules to require that laypersons receive some training and be properly qualified before providing animal chiropractic care. So what happens if a person ignores these rules and chooses to provide care without a license? Essentially, they're practicing veterinary medicine without a license. In most states, practicing any profession without a license can have criminal consequences, including jail time or prison time. The state may obtain an injunction or a cease and desist order to prevent the unlicensed person from continuing to practice. Of course, the patients and the owners may have a claim for malpractice against the person who practiced without a license. If the person who practices has other types of licenses, for example, a chiropractor who practices on animals without supervision, their chiropractic license may also be sanctioned by the Board of Chiropractic Examiners for that illegal conduct. The rules also provide that it is unlawful to help an unlicensed person to practice without that license. So some examples, or one example comes out of Arkansas. The veterinarian referred a dog to a chiropractor for animal chiropractic, but the veterinarian was not present to supervise the chiropractor and the veterinarian did not include the chiropractic treatment in their records. As a result, that veterinarian was disciplined for helping the unlicensed chiropractor practice without supervision. So it's important to understand the rules and make sure you are following the rules to avoid these problems.